Good morning, it is day, so not 16, it's day 116 and it's our first day here in Jakarta. We're going to check out what the breakfast is like in the, how do you say it, Art Hotel? Oh, Art Hotel. Art Hotel. Yeah, it's spelt kind of funny. And then we're going to explore the area. We're right in the city centre, so we might not take any taxis or buses and we can check it out. I've left it to Tim to navigate us through today. So are you ready? I am, and luckily your tweezers didn't get confiscated. Mm. You need to poke yourself in the eye. Thank you. Morning. I think, yeah, we uh, circumvented the uh, entry. Hmm? We circumvented the entry. So I called for backup and it was out of water, so I was never going to get it working. But I am enjoying the sultry uh, tones of um, some or other and the Jean-Michel Basquiat style uh, decoration. So are you enjoying the strongest coffee in the world and your pineapple? Pineapple? Um, yeah, no, the coffee's good. I mean, I don't really drink that much coffee, but it tastes good. Pineapple. Oh, but you have to be aware. In the fridge, there are some jars, and it looks like it's like apple in some some sort of fruit sauce. Um, but it's not. It's kimchi. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Hence, why are you enjoying your pineapple? Ah. Uh, Maybe that's what we'll head towards in a moment. Yeah. I know very little about Jakarta. From what I have read, it does have a colonial past and uh, that one was fraught with uh, different competing uh, colonial powers between uh, the Dutch East India Company and the British East India Company and uh, they had different alliances throughout the ages. I think uh, Jakarta has a history dating back to the 1500s um, but I will find out more, no doubt. But behind me here, it does look like it's low rise and it's planted with mature trees. And I reckon maybe perhaps this might be a slightly older section of perhaps colonial. And then obviously we go around and it's much more high rise. They don't look super, super new. Um, over there, they, they look modern, I guess. But we'll find out a lot more, no doubt. So yeah, I'm interested to go and explore. It does feel like it's going to be hot. The sun does feel intense and there is a bit of a haze absolutely everywhere. There is no swimming pool on the top of the building, but we have what turns into a pump in nightclub, I reckon. They've got a couple of them here and I'm glad we're in the middle section of the hotel. I didn't hear anything last night. No, but they continue the vibe into breakfast because the lights are still dim 
um, and yeah they could possibly put the lights up a little bit but um, or we could perhaps sit nearer the window yeah maybe. then we got further to go to get that food what did you think yeah. of the food um yeah i know they, they had variety there they had your asian cuisines coffee was good and actually i've, I've been drinking the coffee which is nice um fruit selection of fruits uh, egg stations um soups and yeah, breads and all of that sort of stuff. Croissants, um, they could have been a bit better. But yeah, I enjoyed my, my so breakfast. So I am going to dissect the breakfast service. I think the setting's pretty good. I like the art, artwork. It's Jean-Michel Basque-esque. Um, the music, I think it was pretty good. I think I heard a bit of Sam Cooke uh, coming mm. out, which uh, I always like to hear. In terms of the food, I think the Asian food was good. It was a bit cold. Maybe we came down a little bit late, but they need to keep it hot. Um, the breads they weren't good mm. uh, the fruit the fruit was good um, but yeah I think when you came in it looks quite impressive and it kind of disappointed if I'm honest I did get coffee it was super super strong I had to get someone to come and uh, show, show me how to do it yeah but I thought it was right and it's eggs so were good. funny eggs were good she made good scrambled eggs and it's so funny with the fruit because we go to places where it's open to the elements and you got flies all over the fruit and they don't even cover it here there's no flies and they have it right in the fridge which is quite hard to reach but yeah it keeps it cool and keeps the flies off the one or two yeah, flies it's all lurking. about the refrigeration and this is uh, i'd say our second jaunt into a nightclub style hotels and it does bring back nightmares of when you booked us accidentally into i don't know what was it the rainbow hotel in barcelona no, what it was called but it was basically it was our first ever holiday together as a couple and um i booked us into uh, barcelona's gay hotel without knowing it yeah i don't know how you knew as soon as i looked at the website i was like yeah why are we going you here did. it had pumping techno at like seven in the morning PVC chairs yeah it was way too much and, and every morning there was like a light box above the bed that just had a naked dude so it was cotton balls in the face every morning <laughs> it, it was, was yeah it was a bit much <laughs> yeah so we are definitely not meant to be going up onto the rooftop <laughs> nightclub at the moment. It is a bit of a crystal maze challenge to get out. Partly yeah. it's called BART. What was, the, what was that an acronym for? I think it was just BART Top. Okay, well, there we go. BART, BART, my good friend BART. I hope you've got those flares down. Um, I need to message you to find out. But will we make it back to our room? I think we have. I think we uh, got away with that one. We are cowering in a corner where we found some shade. It's going to be hot and like the true uh, novice tourists that we are, I think that's putting it kindly to be fair. We've decided to head out at 11 a.m. just as the heat starts to get intense. Um, like most things that I'm left in charge of, there's been very little planning. So <laughs> we're kind of picking a direction in what I think is the National Monument. And uh, we're going to head there. I don't know how far it is. I don't really know much about it. But um, yeah, let's give it a go and have a wander. Yeah, let's explore Jakarta. Yeah, it should lead these things to Sarah. It would all be planned, mapped, and uh, probably articulated a little bit better than I would. No, not that's really. not true. <laughs> no, exactly. Huh? Crossings or do we wait I don't know, I think just double check. And also I was thinking, you know in London or in England you say look left or right, yeah. here both ways you have to look yeah. at both ways, you never know. There's sneaky little motorcycle lanes <laughs> that can take you out. But the traffic doesn't seem too insane here. Huh? In my opinion, it doesn't seem too insane here. It looks alright. They were sleeping in stress positions right there. I could have learned a thing or two from her. That was a high level hanging off a bar and sleeping standing up. They're waiting for business Gojek. Was it Gojek or? Yeah, no, it's Gojek. Both. They like the shade of spaces and they're not interested in grabbing you because they're waiting for a ding dong on their phone. Follow a local. <laughs> We're just following. <laughs> Stick with them.
so we have no idea how safe Jakarta is. I reckon it'll be alright, but do we have our phones out with it? I think we should exercise a little bit of caution until we familiarise ourselves. Yeah. I'll carry the camera, I think. Okay. Smoking, you yeah. say? There are a lot of smoking and a lot of vaping products advertised here, there, and everywhere. And also, we have the scooter of choice for Indonesia, and it is different again. It's a Honda Beat, and I do like it. They've got the extended mudguard at the back. I need to know why they distribute different bikes in different regions. And yeah, you see them only this model then in uh, Kuala Lumpur, you see only a different model. It's so, their style, it's their yeah, trend. I, I need to speak to Come down here. This is cool. It's like a, what's in Malaysia, what do you call those things? Not Mamax. Um, they were called Hawker Centres. Is this like a Hawker Centre? Yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Thank you. Not yet. I mean, I would not like to be that bike. <laughs> you can't even get out. Huh? Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, this is going to be difficult. Then she's stretching, wait, wait, he's, he's stretching, ready to cross. So these roads around Medeca Square, which is where the National Monument lies, are really, really big and they're not too busy. It's, it's very different from Bangkok in that respect, but there is a haze of smog and everything is kind of overcast. And I guess it makes the sun a little bit less intense, but maybe it's killing our lungs. And behind me, you can see, okay, I'm following Sarah, you can see the redevelopment going on around this square, which is similar to um, the main square that was near Klong Toy in Bangkok, I can't remember the name. Um, so obviously, uh, yeah, developing these central spaces and Lumpini, Lumpini one, Park. L one Lumpini well Park. Well done. Lumpini. Yeah, you definitely get a merit badge for that. So yeah, let's go and see if we can find this national monument. something I spotted from uh, the rooftop this morning and I had a feeling it might be the National Monument and I have been drawn to it as I was Garuda. Um, it's placed in Medeca Square and that's a name that has 
popped up here and there. So I thought, okay, what does this name mean? And it's an interesting one. So it comes from the Medecas, who were slaves, who uh, were brought from India and the East Indies. And the Dutch colonists here offered them freedom if they uh, renounced Catholicism and uh, converted to the Dutch Reformed Church. And Medeca has, uh, well, it means um, free or free. So it's a symbol of um, a free people and perhaps a rallying cry against the colonial powers that did exist here. Um, so yeah, interesting. And uh, hopefully they won't get uh, upset with me for enjoying the colonial architecture here, which hopefully they still like, kind of like they did in Malaysia. But I don't know what the attitude is here towards uh, colonialism. And yeah, it was pretty bad everywhere it was, to be honest, wasn't it? Hannah, 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 look where I am. Do you know, do you know? Or are you more if I went to like landmarks of uh, Shedley? <laughs> like me, Hounslow, not Filipino. Where am I, where am I, where am I? Here we are. I lay in the shadow of an immense obelisk, 132 meters tall. So is that taller than Vishnu and Garuda? Were you paying attention? Yes, it's 10 meters higher than yeah, That's just because I told you that. But yeah, <laughs> is that an eternal flame on the top? I don't know. And it uh, symbolizes Indonesian independence. And it was completed in 1975. And it stands on an absolutely immense square. It's 60 hectares. There are a lot of people here, but it feels nice and empty because it is so, so big. And I was gonna say, it kind of reminds me, it doesn't, it reminds me of when you walk into Buckingham Palace, but this scale is ridiculous. It's massive. Um, you know, like the the, the, the mile, mile, the mile, yeah. a little bit, but this is just 10 times bigger. Yeah, it's so absolutely it huge, yeah. And there is a sense of order and structure that there has been all throughout Malaysia and Indonesia that perhaps Thailand lacks. Um, and it's beautifully kept, all the pavements, all the cobble work here. Um, yeah, it's great, I like it. Is this burning an eternal flame? Name the song, name the band, name the year. Look around. I do love these tall monuments, they do make you stand, raise your head and uh, look up in awe, kind of an uh, awkward position, but yeah, you've got to do it. Gives your neck ache, yeah. that's how big it is. I'm not sure if they're angels, but they've all been decapitated. there's a significance to that or it's just vandals. One head left standing. Is that Garuda? That does look like Garuda. So we've been walking around this whole monument and it's big trying to find the entrance and we can't find it. However, I think you have to go there and maybe there's an underground tunnel that takes you there. That's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to doing that. And I reckon there are a lot of school parties here doing uh, field days out to come and view um, this national monument. And it's really refreshing whenever you kind of pass a group, they kind of say hi and they smile out of nowhere. It's so different from the UK. Um, and it's really, really cool, especially in a week where we hear about lootings on Oxford Street, gangs of kids running down, just smashing the place up. They're, um, yeah, it feels really safe here and the way things should be. I don't want to hate on the UK, but yeah. Say hi when you go past someone. <laughs> yes, this is the entrance. Secret bunker, sinker, secret tunnel. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> 
So it was 55,000 and apparently we can go to the top. So at 55 for both people, that's about £2.50, which is really, really good. But I think we have an hour, so okay. um, one o'clock we have to be out of here. Okay. Your bag in